Welcome back to the Automation Podcast, the world's number one industrial automation product and technology show. Thanks to you, our audience of highly skilled automation professionals. Thank you for being a member of our audience and thank you for tuning in this week. Now, for those of you new to the show, my name is Sean Tierney of Insights and Automation. And each week I invite a new vendor to come on the show to tell us about their products and technologies. And during their presentation, I play the role of the audience and ask questions that I think you, the members of our audience, may have. And given that a quarter of our audience listens to the show, doesn't watch it, but listens to it, I'll also try to call attention to anything, any visuals or anything I see that the audio audience won't be able to see. So with that said, I want to welcome back to the show, Noam from Kapow. We had a phenomenally great time last year. It was like May 3rd, Podcast 152. Noam came on and he introduced us to Kapow, which is this amazing technology. And I know a lot of you may not have caught that episode. It was during the week of Automate. So maybe you were at the show, maybe you're busy. So uh, Noam, could you not only please reintroduce yourself to our audience in case they don't remember from last year, but also could you reintroduce your technology before telling us what's new and happening with uh, your product? Hi, Sean. Thank you very much for having me again. It really was a pleasure last time and it's even a bigger pleasure right now. My name is Noam Geffen, and I am the chief business officer here at Kapow, which means basically I handle marketing, sales, business development uh, in the organization. We are basically a company which is based out of Israel, a startup company, uh, and the name is a word game for capacitive power. So Kapow is not only like a movement that you do like in comics books, but it's also capacitive power. And the reason for that is that this is the technology that we base our solutions on. Okay, Uh, as opposed to other wireless power delivery solutions that you are aware of that usually work with inductive, okay, or or magnetic fields. Okay, we use capacitive power, which basically relies on electronic fields. The technology is different. And then based on that technology, we built a lot of knowledge, a lot of know-how, patent protected as well, which allows us to take this technology to the to the to push it to the end of the envelope our co-founders are all professors and doctors for electrical engineering for power engineering and we are a deep tech company as i mentioned founded in 2018 and based out of israel maybe i can share with you a little bit about the motivation or what brings us to this specific field of expertise in this specific uh, uh, industry of automation the ability to deliver power okay, very efficiently is needed in, in, in several different industries, of course. You can think of consumer electronics, you can think of homeland security, you can think of uh, aviation. okay. But in the world of automation, it is very, very, very crucial because the further we, we uh, investigate, we learn that energy is the ro- major root cause for automation inefficiencies. If you take an automation solution today, you find out that because of energy, you have charging downtime, okay? If the batteries are not enough to last you through the entire cycle of the shift, you need to charge, which costs you downtime, okay? Because of that, you have fleet inflation. So you need to compensate for that in additional robots, which cost you money from the get-go, okay? Technical faults, safety issues. Of course, we all know uh, the transition to lithium was very, very good in terms of efficiency, but we pay for that in safety okay lithium batteries basically overheat sometimes it explode and all of these things basically are making an, an energy a bigger or a very big big challenge to to overcome and we think okay what if we can by a miraculous way provide or deliver power constantly to the fleet while it's moving so provide 100 percent uptime for 100 percent of the units and do it in a way that the integration will be seamless to any kind of robot, okay? And and also platform agnostic. So every kind of solution, AMRs, AGVs, ASRS solutions, overhead uh, uh, hoisting systems, even drones, which are used today for uh, automation, for uh, inventory, if we can buy a miraculous way transfer power while they are moving, we basically solve this problem, or at least mitigated it by a lot. If I would uh, uh, try and, and, and look at, you know, what power in motion, and that's basically the, the secret source of Kapow, to deliver the energy while the robots are moving, what benefits do power in motion has for current charging? It can be wireless charging, but it can also be regular connected charging. So first of all, if you can deliver power to robots while they, they're moving, you, you create 100% uptime, 
which is opposed to uh, industry standard of sometimes 20 to 30 percent downtime of a robot. If a robot works for five hours but then charges for one hour, you lose money on that one hour. Basically, another thing is that if you need to charge today, you need to go to a designated area, okay, which is outside of the robot's original route. But if you can charge while the robot is doing its operational route, then basically you can also save on that. No to and from lanes, even to the point that you don't need to uh, waste, let's say, additional warehouse real estate in order to put your charging stations, because today it costs money, of course. Fleet, as I said, is, is uh, nominal uh, versus extended fleets, which are today you need to pay for. And also there is the thing of uh, the battery lifetime. Today, the profile for charging usually is you start working when the robot is around 80% full because you don't want to charge it to 100%. And then it gets degraded up to 40, 30, 20%. Okay, but this kind of uh, charging regime on the battery exhausts it. What if we, you could find a soft spot for a lithium battery, which is around 70%, okay, and about half a C charging, and just trickle charge it. So every time, let it go from 70 to 67, 70, 68. All the time, keep it at that level. You can also extend your battery lifetime by up to three times. So all of that basically is achieved by delivering power to robots while they move. I'm, I'm, maybe I want to, for our uh, audio listeners, explain a little bit how it's done. And it's, it's basically a very, very a simple concept. Imagine that uh, on the surface, okay, or in the facility, put on the floor or wherever you want, a floor antenna, which whenever the robot goes on top of, okay, it gets boosted with power. Like a Mario Kart game where they go on those mats and just gets a boost of power. On the bottom of the robot, we put an antenna. And on the surface, we put antenna. These antennas can be modular. The floor antenna can be short, uh, it can be long up to 30 feet, it can be wide or narrow or round or rectangle, whatever the situation is, you can easily mo uh, modify the antenna. And on the bottom of the robot as well, it can be on the bottom, on the side, uh, you can even put it on the skis of drones, uh, very easily modified. And whenever the robot goes on top of that, it gets boosted with power. Okay, I'm just sharing a video again for our audio listeners that uh, it's also available now in, on our website that, that shows how it's working. The robot is traveling, okay, in its course, in route, not, does not deviate, goes on top of uh, this floor antenna and gets boosted with power. We provide 500 watts currently. It will be 1.5K by the end of the, end of the year. Um, and basically the idea is to give it a boost of power. Uh, and, and, and put enough of those in the warehouse so the robot will have a 100% uptime. Diving a little bit into the technology and how it's done, this is basically where our core technology is. This is where we are very, very good at. The idea is, is pretty simple. Imagine the same concept as a radio station. Okay, and in the, ra in the radio, when you turn the knob, okay, you try to lock in to the best possible frequency that will allow the best possible reception. We do the same thing but with the energy concept, we are locking on to the best available energetic station, as we call it. And while the robot is moving and the character characteristics change, okay, the distance between the robot and the floor changes, the speed changes, everything. So the capacitance between the robot antenna and the floor antenna changes. We know how to auto-tune into that and change it on the fly. That's the core, that's the core ability of Kapow. And this is where our uh, uh, basic model comes from. Let's maybe review a few uh, other options in the market, okay? Or, or let's try and understand why we think this is the best possible for, uh, solution for the automation uh, world. So, you know, starting with today's connected charging, you know, everyone is using connected charging. It's there, okay? But it has all the drawbacks that we, uh, we discussed. You need, uh, as a robot, you need to leave your operational route go to a specific station, wait there until you get charged, okay, and only then get back into circulation. The transition to wireless charging, but a static one, basically allows uh, the solution to be safer because you don't have open connected uh, connectors, but you still need to leave the operational area. You, need, you still need to wait, okay? And this world, you know, the innovation there is basically uh, more uh, uh, faster chargers, bigger batteries, stuff that will basically mitigate a little bit the charging downtime, but it will never solve the solution. 
okay? And then you exhaust the battery. You have other operational enhancements, for example, like battery swaps, okay, hot swaps, or you have uh, opportunistic charging, but these things take a lot of money. Okay? You even have some dynamic wireless solutions, which, you know, follow like a magnetic coil, uh, but for that, you need a very, uh, let's say, he very heavy investment in the warehouse. You need excavation. Those things are huge today. This, this is more suitable for moving tractors and, and locomotives than using mobile robots. And the idea is that if you look at what this solution brings to me from an operational efficiency perspective, can it improve my operational efficiency? And can I apply it to all the platforms out there? Basically, there is a trade-off. So for connected charging, you can basically put it on every kind of vehicle, but it will not improve your operational efficiency. While having dynamic wireless charging as you have today will uh, improve your operational efficiency, but it's not applicable for, or, for, for most of the market. The only solution, which basically the integration is very easy to do, and it applies to all robotic makes and models and even uh, standards like uh, AMRs and AGVs, etc., and brings full operational efficiency, 100% uptime, is Kapow's in-motion power delivery. There is a question that I, I usually get, uh, so do I need to cover the entire facility with these floor antennas in order to, to deliver 100% uptime? And the answer is, of course, no. What we have is a, is, a, is a software tool called Floor Planner, which our customers get. And for this tool, Basically, what you do is you upload your facility layout, how your facility looks like, which kind of robots would you like to deploy, and the algorithm calculates for you where are the strategic places you need to lay down those floor antennas, how long they should be, okay? And, of course, what is the minimal coverage gain? We are uh, getting to the point that we know with less than 2% coverage of the entire facility, we get 100% uptime easily, okay? Sometimes we can move... 100 uh, robots in a fulfillment center only by using two of those stickers, just because the algorithm knows exactly where to, to, uh, to place them. Another thing which is, which is a byproduct, which is very interesting to discuss, okay, is the strategy. You know, today lithium batteries are an expensive part of the robot. You know, robots that cost 35, 40, 45K dollars, the, the battery for them also costs three, four, sometimes 5K dollars. It's a lot of money. And those batteries are heavy, inefficient, and as I, as I said, lithium batteries are a safety hazard. By moving the concept from deep charging, deep discharging to trickle charging, okay, and basically using only those kinds of small boosts, you don't now need a big battery. Why deploy a 2K, uh, 2K watt hour battery that will last you for six hours, where all you need is to travel for two minutes until you meet the next floor antenna? So basically what you can do is you can reduce the spec of the battery and make do with 10% or 20% of the original size and still get 100% uptime. This strategy is up to you, of course. Kapow will support the original battery, will support reduced spec. And in some cases, we can even eliminate the battery altogether, replace it with a small supercapacitor and basically reach 100% uptime and the lithium-free uh, concept. One of our customers actually put a green sticker that says lithium-free battery on it, which is basically um, is, is a very uh, nice thing to uh, show around ESG-wise. Well, I think, too, that a lot of companies are going to be get uh, lithium battery fatigue after a while, because as they go through their third or fourth change out, they're going to be like, there has to be a better way. And I love the fact that you have the ability to provide the uh, supercapacitors that you've tested some out that you know which ones work well in these applications. I did want to ask you one thing, though, that's very clear to me on this screen, and you may be getting to this later in the presentation, but you not only put the antenna on the floor, the sticker or the mat on the floor, you have the antenna on the bottom. In this case, we're looking at a lot of AGVs so, or AMRs, so we, we put a sticker on the bottom. That's the antenna on the bottom, and I know they can go on any side, but you also have a component that goes inside between the battery or the supercapacitor and your antenna. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, this is a receiver. So basically when the, uh, the, the energy flows wirelessly from the, the floor antenna to the robot antenna, mm -hmm. it is connected to a receiver which connects parallel to the battery and the rail of the robot. And the con okay. concept is that it absorbs the 100% the power from from the Kapow transmitter, and it mm -hmm. basically decides how much will it pour 
to the rail of the robot to, to let it continue moving? And how mm -hmm. much will it charge the battery? So if we take a uh, fulfillment operation with robots, which usually consume around 100 watts on average, if we deliver 500 watts, it means I need 100 watts to, to let the robot continue moving. And the mm -hmm. rest of the 400 will charge the battery at the same time while the robot is moving. And I think that's important because you can't just put a battery across the line. You have to have an electronic battery charger circuit in there to charge the battery correctly. And I'm, it sounds like you guys have worked with a lot of different battery manufacturers to make sure that you're charging it to their specs to make sure it's safe and, and no harm comes to the battery. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And, and moreover, we know how to work with all kinds of, of, of let's say, energy uh, forms. So it can be a lithium battery, a lead acid battery, supercapacitors, mm -hmm. bus bars. This is the okay. core knowledge that Kapow came from. Let me just review a shortly a case study that we have done with uh, with a customer of us. Unfortunately, I still cannot reveal the name of the customers because the PR um, is about to be launched in a few weeks. But uh, let's say it's from it's from it's a very very large tier one operator from the manufacturing industry, uh, and its problem basically was fleet inflation. So it, he has a fleet of 50 robots, 50 AMRs, and his problem is every AMR costs you know 40 50k. Uh, dollars. His problem is that those AMRs have a work to charge ratio of four to one, which means if you or, or, or it means if you want to have a cluster of four robots, you need to have five because the four the fourth one is always hogging the charger. So you need a spare one. And if you have a 50 robot operation divided into clusters, you need a lot. You need like 20 to 30 percent additional robots just for that. Uh, a bigger problem that it has basically is the operational efficiency. Okay, when when you have additional robots that need and you need to manage them, and some go to the charger in a different place, and sometimes sometimes you have traffic jam just because the fleet is inflated, you are not efficient. You lose a lot of money on that. And what we did is we deployed our solution in a cluster over there, and we uh, showed them that first of all we gained a hundred percent uptime. Instead of four to one, it's an infinity to one. Those robots, from the minute that they were deployed, they never stopped working. So they're working all the time. So what he, he could do is basically collect all the spare robots, which now he does not need to use. Okay, I, I, I neglected to say at the beginning, but this was a retrofit project. So we know how to work retrofit and we know how to work with new models as well. This project was a retrofit, so he basically took all the robots okay, that he saved just by working with Kapow and redirected them to other operational routes and basically gained much more production from them. So immediately it got more productive. Another thing that he gained, okay, and this is also very interesting, is then this was, of course, from day one. After a few weeks, he did some measurements and he found out that uh, automation solution is basically responsible for 4% of the entire facility's operational losses. Okay, and 2% out of them are because of charging downtime. So immediately from deploying Kapow, he saved this 2%. So 50% of the entire operational losses caused by automation were immediately saved. But moreover, additional uh, uh, almost a percent was saved just because now queues became much, much more effective, okay, much more efficient, no queues, uh, all the time working. This is a huge success for him. Just to show you here a few graphs, and again, for, for our audio listeners, I will just share that I'm showing a graph of the robot before Kapow. This is the regime of charging, and you can basically see, you can see a robot getting charged and then discharged, and you see that within 180 minutes of working, so three hours of working, 40 minutes the robot spent on the charger, which means basically it's not working. Okay, if you try now with Kapow, Basically, what you see here on the graph is, the, is, is it's not a deep discharge between 80 and 30 or 80 and 40 percent. You always hover between 80 and 70 because that's the, the most efficient part for the robot. And, OK, all of this is gained while the robot is doing its actual operational job. So you get 100 percent efficiency. The robot's uh, energy never depletes and you increase your operational efficiency. In summary, I will just say that the immediate proven benefit of Genesis, our power delivery system for uh, uh, in-motion robotics, is the dramatic cost of ownership. If you can save on, 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 char on charging downtime, you can save on the robots within the fleet, 
You can save on the, 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 the cost and size of batteries. You can save on the uh, operational expenses like the stations, the current charging stations that basically hogs up uh, real estate in your warehouse and you can use them for other stuff. All of these amount to a number that we uh, calculate with our customers to be 35% dramatic uh, decrease in the cost of ownership that costs you to deploy an automation solutions. Other benefits, of course, is you can now control your ro roadmap. Our solution can be uh, tailored, as I said, retrofit or new design to every kind of make and model. So even if you have a forklift next to an AGV, next to an AMR in the warehouse, they will all get powered by the same system. Okay, you can change or reduce or, or even eliminate your lithium batteries as much as you would like, and you are basically the one that, that, that controls your roadmap. Solution just got much more safe, right? So less lithium, less lithium batteries, um, everything is uh, it's much more safe, and of course, efficiency goes through the roof. I will just end with a, a short video from Modex, the logistics show that we have uh, exhibited in uh, three weeks ago. Um, and over, uh, over here, what we actually demonstrated is a floor antenna. And what you can see here is you can see uh, two uh, robots from different makes and models, right? One is a mirror platform and one is a thousand, a dual platform, okay, which are completely independent. One uses lithium battery, the other uses lead acid battery. And you can see them going, okay, in movement on top of the floor antenna and you see them getting charged while they go, okay? By the way, we can support speeds of up to five meters per second, so pretty fast. Okay, and they are charging while they're going and throughout the show, we didn't even charge them on that. So the technology is here, the opportunity is here. Um, we uh, address AMR manufacturers, distributors, and uh, end customers of uh, operators directly. Um, and we would really, really love, uh, Sean, to talk about our technology and our uh, solutions all day long. Awesome. And, you know, before before we get away from this uh, this video, um, what about like, I know people are going to accidentally walk over these antennas, right? I mean, typically you would avoid something like that. So, you know, the AMR, it can have all the time on it, but what is the kind of caution do you need for people who are walking around the facility? Do they have to avoid them? Do you need to put big yellow tape around it? Uh, you know, is it safe for a person to walk over it? Yeah, so first of all, uh, safety-wise, it's completely safe to walk over it while the robot is uh, uh, while the robot is is on there as well. The only part which is electrified, which is basically transfers energy, is the one underneath the robot. So even if you stand next to it, nothing will happen. Okay. Uh, this this is one thing. Second th second thing, as as I mentioned, um, this is uh, in terms of uh, um, deploying it. It's very easy. You can take it, it, it's not mounted. You can you know pick it up and, and move it aside if you need. Uh, but it's very rigid, so you can go over uh, over it with a forklift as well. But coming back to the safety side, and we have the safety certifications to prove for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Completely, completely safe. Now, I, I do know in some locations, people wear some steel-toed con construction-style boots. I would imagine you'd probably want to want those on it. I mean, what what are we talking about for wear and tear? I mean, you get your AMOs driving over this all day long. Yeah. Yeah, we, we um, for measurements and tests that we have done, we can endure the weight of something like a six and a half ton forklift going on top of that 500 times a day for wow. four and a half years. Wow, so that's this cool. is very yeah. Th this is meant for the automation industry. We are aware that you know it's it's not always like fulfillment centers with uh, tiny robots. Sometimes it's you know manufacturing and you have forklifts and you have tuggers um, and you have lots of you know cranes and stuff like that. So this part should be very much endured, definitely. Yeah. By Excellent. the way, we have other me mechanisms that mm -hmm. can identify when you have metal in field. When you have, uh, um, you know, uh, people st stepping over it and, and whatever, it's safe, but we can still identify that and send alerts. I didn't oh. share it. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't share it, but we have a software layer, okay, mm -hmm. which calls uh, uh, GEMS, which, uh, which is Gen the Genesis uh, Energy Management System. Mm -hmm. This uh, system is the software basically, first of all, aggregates all data from the robot, which is relevant, all data from the facility, uh, the floor antennas can be integrated with the WMS and sends a lot of notifications, do proactive maintenance, alert you when the robot is misaligned, because sometimes, you know, robots are driving, and I get this question a lot, what happens if the robot is missing it by 10 centimeters? 
So mm -hmm. first of all, with our system, misalignment is up to 50% of the size of the robot. So even if 50% of the robot is tilting to the side, you will get, still get more than 80% of the, the, the efficiency, the power. But we can also alert to the WMS, listen, that robot over there is missing the sticker by, missing the floor antenna by 10 centimeters. Something is wrong with navigation. Or in that floor antenna on the other side, someone dropped a screwdriver. So the system will still work because, as I said, it's capacitive power, which mm -hmm. is not sensitive to metal in field, but I can still alert that to the operator. That's awesome. One more time before we go, I'll just uh, the, all of these videos, by the way, are at our website and, you know, we will uh, gl uh, gladly have remote demos and sessions and introduction centers to, to everyone who is uh, basically uh, interested in this kind of uh, technology and this kind of solution to increase the operational efficiency. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming that there's several people listening or watching who are like, yeah, we're going to need this. How do they get in touch with your company to learn more? So so we are we are on LinkedIn. Uh, we are on on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. We have our own website, which you can basically go in, in and, and basically play with some of the, the stuff that, that, that I've showed here. So the floor planner, the tool that lets you know how many floor antennas will you need, it's available free on our website. The, we have a calculator on the website that you can basically put your data and see immediately how much money Kapow can save right from the get-go. Other tools and, and stuff, come visit our website. It's really fun. Excellent. All right. That's great. Was there anything else you wanted to cover today, Noel? No, I just wanted to thank you very much for this opportunity and, you know, just being a, a guest at your podcast really warms my heart. Um, last year was a fun. This year it's even more fun. And, you know, I really hope that you will have me next year as well so we can show other improvements that we have done. Well, no, I think this is great. I, I just think you have such a, this is such a next gen product that I know, you know, just the cost of having those extra robots charging, you know, basically down. You know, it's something that from an automation standpoint, that's not that's not normal for us. We want we have stuff that runs 24 7, 365. So be able to extend that to our mobile devices. And even um, can you talk? I don't think we talked about drones as much this time. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about drones? Because I think a lot of us automation folks, we know what drones are. We see them, but we don't usually see them in our warehouses. I know they're really taken off in warehouses. And um, could you talk a little bit about the hoist crane type of linear uh, stickers as well, because we didn't talk, cover either of those. And I think those are two applications that are, I think some of our listeners will have maybe more so than an AMR. So would you, could you touch on that for a second? Yes, sure. Um, well, let's tackle drones first. I mean, drones have two, uh, let's say, major challenges within them. One, of course, is the the hang time, okay, the fly time. Okay, they, they, they basically, they don't have a lot of time in the air and they constantly need to drop for charging. So one option is charge them while they are mid-air, okay? Um, of course, it might not be applicable for very heavy drones, but the ones that are used currently in the industry just for inventory are lightweight. And a cool thing about the Kapaos technology, and you mentioned that uh, while we address ASRS solutions or pallet shuttles and stuff like that, the same concept that for floor antennas can be used to put on rails and, and hoists and stuff like that so I can play with it and I can, I can make a 30 feet long and, 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 and two inch wide antenna and put it on inside the rail. So in the same concept, I can also put these kind of antennas on, on pods and stuff like that. And whenever the drones gets near that, because the distance between the antennas can be up to 10 centimeters, up to uh, something like four inches, okay, three and a half inches, then the drone can just hover next to it and get the energy. Okay, sometimes we also use that for forklifts. If you don't want the forklift to go on top of the antenna, we will just put the, the antenna on the side and the, the, the forklift will just drive next to it. Um, so this is one way to solve that with the POC that we have done with the drone company. Instead of landing every uh, 35 minutes, it landed once in three months, just wow. for me. So um, instead of having the stickers on the floor, the antennas on the floor, you can run them down the side of the shelves. Exactly. And so it's, it's traveling to where it needs to go. It can be charging just like an, an AMR, tra you know, traveling across the sticker on the floor to get where it's going. Exactly. And so it can just stay up and run for, for like you said, three three months that's amazing yeah yeah it is uh another uh problem worth mentioning is 
uh, what we call again misalignment. Okay, drones in order to get charged, they need to land, and you either need to manually plug into into power, or yeah. today you have systems um, that you know need to centralize the drone while it's landing in order to do the connected charging. Wireless charging as today, if it's not Kapaos technology, but let's say traditional inductive technology, if you're not completely aligned, if you miss the mm-hmm. pod, and it's correct the same thing as robots. If you miss the pod by an alignment of two centimeters, three centimeters, you will not get charged. With our spatial, spatial distance that we allow, it goes the same thing for a drone. Even if it lands crooked, you know, it means the X and Y lands on the, on the side, it can still get powered. And this is a very good uh, advantage where you could just put a pod and not force the, the drone to land exactly at the same, uh, uh, but let's say in the vicinity of the pod. So with these two things, and we have basically an experience of years doing that, uh, we are also very good at that. So the, as I said, the technology can be used and utilized in many, many different ways. But we think, you know, the automation world is something that is starving for a 100% uptime, a 24-7 uh, yeah. a solution and we think you know going the kapow way and kapowering your devices is basically the way to do that yeah i think we have all experienced inductive charges on our new phones and maybe you got a new car and you get the inductive charger built in and it's like if you have the wrong case on or you have you know if, if you don't have it right on top of that charger it does not it does not charge so um this is uh i, I such an uh just an advancement as far as being able to charge uh devices especially devices that should be on the move 24 7 in most in most applications but well noam i really appreciate you coming on the show i always enjoy talking with you and talking about your technology um anybody in the audience if you guys uh think this is something you could use please reach out to them because they are they are just been a great company to work with and uh it's exciting new technology which is uh can't be said for every show we do but uh I really enjoy looking at this next-gen stuff. So, Noam, thank you again for coming on. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I want to thank Noam for coming on the show and bringing us up to speed on Kapow and all the different applications they can solve. Now, with that said, if you did enjoy this episode, please give us a like, give us a sub, give us a share. That is the fuel that keeps this show on the air. And if you want to try out our new community, it's completely free. You can visit us at theautomationblog.com forward slash community. Also, if you know anybody looking for PLC, HMI, or SCADA training, please tell them about my website, theautomationschool.com, where I teach on Control Logics, Compact Logics, Panel View Plus, Siemens S7 PLCs, and so much more. We even have a brand new Arduino course that is just $9.99. With all that said, I want to wish you an awesome week and encourage you to stay courageous and stay fearless. And until next time, my friends, peace.